Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good evening, this is Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will continue the heteroscedacity problem. In the last lectures, we have discussed or we have started little bit about the heteroscedacity issue. So, how it is coming to that uh, in the econometric model and how it is very useful for discussing that particular issue. So, we highlighted that heteroscedacity has a two specific aspects. So, just I am bringing a little bit more here. So, this is hetero, uh, heteroscedacity, okay. So, then this is scedacity. So, that means uh, briefly it is the e uh, e equation of unequal, unequal uh, error variance error variance ok. So, if it is if it is turned to equal variance then that will lead to homoscedacity issue. Homoscedacity problem ok. So, that means we start with the FITA model first. So, the moment you have estimated model then like you know so many other uh, econometric pro problem like multicollinearity, uh, autocorrelation etcetera. So, we have to also check the heteroscedacity problem. So, heteroscedacity basic objective is to check the whether the error variance are uh, equal or unequal. If it is equal then it is a good sign you have to go ahead with the econometric problem problems and you can use that model or you can say that this model is best fitted and can be used for uh, forecasting or policy. Use. But uh, if the error variance are not equal, then you have to re redesign, reformulate or you can say restructure till you get the mod estimated model which is the purely homoscedacity in nature. So, that means there should not be any heteroscedacity. So, the, the, what is that? That means there should not be any unequal error variance. So, uh, so we start for, we uh, means the starting point is you, you must have some estimated model then uh, in the meantime you must find out the error component then find out error variance for each and every sample point for u1 u2 u3 like this then if it is equal uh, over the different time periods or a different samples then obviously so uh, uh, if it is equal then it is homoscedacity if not equal then it is heteroscedacity then you have to uh, you know uh, uh, re recycle it till you get the homoscedacity Okay, so that is how the problem is all about. So that is how I have started. So let us assume that the problem has a heteroscedacity. So then your objective is to make the variance unequal variance to equal variance, and that will lead to homoscedacity problem. So this is the basic structure. So now that means uh, uh, theoretical uh, means uh, 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 by statistics heteroscedacity means the presence of unequal variance in the econometric models. So, unequal variance means it is related to error terms, unequal error variance in the particular econometric models. So, now if it is unequal error variance, then that is one of the negative point for econometric modeling that will give you red signal. So, you turn into green signal that is the homoscedacity problem, then you have to go ahead with the forecasting issue. So, now, so the moment you have a heteroscedacity, the moment you have heteroscedacity, so, now uh, 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 like you know degree of autocorrelation, degree of multicollinearity. So, similarly you can have the uh, framework or you know structure nature of this heteroscedacity. Is it too much pro problematic or very sm uh, a small problem all, all together, ok. So, then you will see how is that actually safe. So, there are various uh, ways we can represent the heteroscedacity problem. So, let us say case 1 here. So, uh, uh, what is the issue of heteroscedacity? Heteroscedacity means I will take x observation here. So, that means x1, x2 up to you say xn. Okay, these are the x observations, right? So, now this side I will put residuals. Okay, residuals. So, that is means error terms. Okay, error uh, error variance. Okay. So, now 
Uh, this we, I will plot like this. Okay, I will plot like this. These are all error uh, error uh, uh, you know items error error items. Okay, so now this error items uh, error items are in a you know it is more or less equal spread very close to each other. Okay, you see the, the gap is very close to each other. So that means if this is the case, then it it we can call it it is not uh, heteroscedastic problem rather it is a homoscedastic problem. Homoscedacity problem. Okay, so this is the variance issue only. So if the variance is large, then it will affect the model. If the variance is low, it will be less effect on the model. So we try to build a structure where there is a less error variance. So that is how uh, that is the objective of this particular process. Okay, I will take a case two, another case. Okay, so another case like this. And the same structures. I will put it here x, and this side is residuals error terms. Then obviously I, I will take like this. Okay, the plot 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 will be like this. Okay, the plot will be plot will be like this. So this is means it is the uh, it is the if the error variance will be errors are coming like this way, then there is a heteroscedacity problem. This is heteroscedacity problem, and that is that too. Uh, uh, it is the increasing sample of error variance. This is the increasing sample of Impulse of uh, error variance. Okay, increase sample of error variance. Okay, I'll take another case. I'll take another case here, case three. Okay, I'll take similar like this way. Then this side x, this side residuals u. Uh, uh, then the problem will be like this. Okay. So this is also heteroscedacity problem. The nature is heteroscedacity problem, and here it's a decreasing decreasing issue, decreasing nature of error variance. Okay. So now uh, we'll take case four, another case. So there may be like this. It may be like this. It may be like this. Okay, then it will be like this. Then it will be like this. Okay, so this is also heteroscedacity issue. Heteroscedacity issue with both decreasing and increasing nature of error variance. Okay, so there are altogether there are four different sets of heteroscedacity problems. Uh, case one where there is. No such heteroscedacity. It's a minor level, so it is not a problem for econometric modeling. That model can be considered as the best models, and use can can be used for forecasting or policy use. But in the second, third, fourth cases, sometimes error variance is increasing, sometimes error variance is increasing, and sometimes both can be go simultaneously. In that case, it is a problem for econometric. You need to remove it. Okay. So uh, exactly how is the step? If you will take another type of structures, you see here. Uh, this side I will take you know three dimensional picture. If I will plot, then obviously the picture will be coming like this: zero x, this side y, and this side u. Okay, or we can say y head. All right. So like this, the, uh, you know, uh, you plot all these things like this. This is this way. You will get like this way. So this type of sequence is called as a. It's looking like homoscedacity. Okay. So this type of structure is called as a homoscedacity issue. But uh, you see, I will take another case here. Okay, another three-dimensional pictures. Okay, so this is a x, this is a o, y, this is y head. Okay, so then I will draw like this. Okay. Okay, this is this is purely heteroscedacity problem. Heteroscedacity problem. Okay. So now, uh, uh, now we come to know that. The basic definition of heteroscedacity is that unequal error variance. Sometimes the variance, error variance are in a increasing trend. Sometimes error variance are in a decreasing trend. Sometimes error variance are very constant with respect to whatever shape of the sample. And sometimes there may be increasing, decreasing, and constant. It can go together. So that depends upon what is your sample observations. Okay. If the sample observation is exclusively very high, then you will find there is a, uh, 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 everything is there, increasing, decreasing, and constant. 
So, anyway, if that is the case, so we have to bring the sequence or structures where there is a error variance are homogeneous in nature. So, that is that should be our aim and that should be our requirement for econometric modeling. So, now once you know the nature of the heteroscedacity, next obvious question is uh, what are the causes behind this heteroscedacity? Why heteroscedacity uh, uh, you know seems to be there in the econometric model? There are various reasons for that. Okay? So, causes behind this heteroscedacity problem. First is there is a concept called as a error learning models error learning models okay you know i have mentioned in the last class the quotation like success is the pillar of uh, failure is the pillar of success so that means if you fail then obviously it will give you learning lessons and that lessons or learning will be very useful for futures okay so error learning model also behaves like that way so uh, means it will give you a equation like this way this is you know error and this is how it is called as a, a, a learning ability or you can say experience okay or you can say committing mistakes uh, with respect to sample of uh, different time periods. So, over the time periods when we will do things uh, uh, after and after time interval different time interval then obviously you will find your error variance will be start decreasing. So, uh, it cannot be uniform uh, or it cannot be constant okay so today you have no experience that's why you are doing and you are committing lots of mistakes so tomorrow you have little bit experience then obviously you do commit errors but uh, the uh, is er uh, amount of error will be less than to first case again next stage uh, you have experience you have you you gain l uh, lessons or you gain uh, message knowledge etc and obviously n error will be committing less and less so that is how error cannot be constant over and over time. So, it will be it will be in a declining trend as a result it will lead to heteroscedacity issue. Okay? So, this is first causes behind this alone and this is very interesting very important one. Okay? Then growth and trend factors. Okay? Uh, you see uh, uh, if uh, we uh, you know in the econometry model itself is go, going to discuss the interdependence between uh, dependent variable and independent variables. So, when we really approach a particular problem, uh, you know, uh, societal problems, then we are tackling various variables to a particular issue. So, variables, uh, variables behaviors are very much, you know, not constant. It will be behave with respect to different condition, different situation, different places, different time framework. So, that is why, you know, over the times, the variables behavior is somewhat increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, etcetera. So, this is how it cannot be constant as a result so all the variables are behaving in a different ways so it will give you signal that it can err and that means it will give the indication that error variance can err, cannot be constant it will be uh, unequal by default okay so then third uh, third point is that this is called as a growth and trend factors growth and trend factors then natural tendency it's a natural tendency of, of the variables okay for instance some of the cases variable itself by nature it will be in a increasing or decreasing trend take a case of you know uh, earnings okay earnings is a variable so uh, i i will take few different industry the software industry then uh, you know corporate uh, financial world then i will take some you know agricultural sector then i i will just uh, uh, compare the earnings of agricultural peoples and earnings of industrial people and earnings of you know say finance people say banking or industry. Then if you compare then obviously by default the earnings uh, of three such industry are completely different. And if I club all these variables together then I will ask so what is the impact of earnings on say uh, uh, savings then obviously uh, you, you will find there is a heterogeneous uh, problem I mean say heteroscedacity problem because the sample itself give you the uh, problem set up, uh, it will give you indication that uh, there is a, you can say uh, mm, heteroscedacity problem because the uh, 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 variable itself behave in a different way. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, there is also measurement error like you know measurement error means uh, sometimes you are uh, asking some question to respondents. So, some co some respondents are behaving very uh, accurately and they, they, they are very unbiased, but some of the responses are behaving some other way around it is a bias. So, if you look these two respondents then obviously it will lead to heteroscedacity problems. So, 
you know by uh, you know by uh, default uh, by techniques uh, you will find some heteroscedasticity it is not artificial uh, instrument it is by this principle or structure it will come automatically okay so this is how the uh, you know uh, the measurement error also have a problem of a uh, heteroscedasticity issue okay so this is uh, uh, you know measurement errors then fifth data improvement technique okay data improvement technique so this is another uh, important variable so uh, generally uh, 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 over and uh, over and above uh, if you will apply uh, you know different techniques with respect to a particular problem then you know by technique itself it will be minimize the error uh, for instance if you will apply wls gls ws and maximum likelihood estimator of a particular problem then obviously you will find the error cannot be constant in uh, by each and every uh, technique so by technique itself it will generate lots of uh, you can say uh, errors or you can say it, it will give you heteroscedasticity issue. So, obviously, even if the technique will also minimize the heteroscedasticity issue. For, uh, for instance, if you have if you are applying uh, uh, if you have a problem and if you are applying OLS, then there may be heteroscedasticity problem, but if you in the same problem if you will apply WLS or GLS, then heteroscedasticity problem can be solved. Uh, so, that is how technique itself can create uh, heteroscedasticity problem, it can also solve the heteroscedasticity problem. So, different techniques also have a, a, a you know co cause uh, for a, you know uh, uh, heteroscedasticity problem ok. Then sixth a, a outliers ok outliers outliers is a problem of heteroscedasticity. You see outliers means it is a data point which is highly distance from other data points ok highly distance from data points. That means it is going against the homogeneous clusters. So, uh, suppose there are you know 10 items here and 2 items in the uh, uh, few uh, few other places, it is very highly distance from other other, uh, uh, other data points. So, then in that case it will be heteroscedasticity problem. So, uh, uh, you have to be very careful about how you have to remove this. In fact, in that case you can either you transfer this data or you can say go for the structural break uh, testing etcetera to normalize the situation otherwise if you go by simple modeling by uh, integrating all these samples at a time then obviously uh, you can say uh, heteroscedasticity will be coming into the picture and you need to have a solution for that okay so this is outliers problem then similarly uh, omission of relevant variables okay relevant variables also another uh, another uh, items which can solve the means which can add the heteroscedasticity problems for instance, uh, last class I have discussed the issue like you know stock price with high uh, industrial industry of, uh, industrial productions, uh, then money supply, then wholesale price index, uh, exchange rate, etc. So in that case, uh, I have mentioned very clearly if you will drop a particular variable, important variable, say money supply or you can say wholesale price index, then obviously it will give you a uh, uh, message that either it is autocorrelation problem or it may be. A heteroscedasticity problem or it may be a both also. So, that is why a, a in, a inclusion of a relevant variable means a, a exclusion of a relevant variable also very problem. Similarly, inclu inclusion of uh, unnecessary variable also uh, problem for this uh, uh, heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation. So, so, you must be very careful what are the relevant variables you are putting in the system and what are the unnecessary variables you are putting in the systems. Okay? So, necessary variables should be included and unnecessary variables should be excluded. If it is other, other, other way around then obviously it will be problem for heteroscedasticity. Okay? So, this is how uh, omission of relevant variable or in inclusion uh, uh, in, 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 you know, exclusion of uh, 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 this is omission of relevant variables or inclusion of unnecessary variables. So, that is how it is called as a uh, inclusion of unnecessary variables ok this is another point you can consider here. Yes. So, then um, uh, skewness of the distributions ok for instance uh, if you will take a very group of people in a particular uh, setup let us say take a case of income. So, there is a income distribution income itself is a inequality in nature ok. So, as a result it will affect the heteroscedasticity problem some of the varia variables by default by nature they are you know unequal variance. So, it cannot be have some of the variables have a very equal in nature. For instance, uh, take a case of you know very well developed uh, financial market or capital market and you observe the stock price or you can say observe the exchange rate etcetera, then you will find it is a very less volatility ok. 
So then if the market is very stable, then you will find a, a error variance will be very le less. If the market is instable, then you will find huge you know error variance. In fact, if is very volatility that is called as a volatility modeling, if volatility is very high, then obviously the risk will be coming into the picture and in fact it is very interesting for different players but it may be affecting the economic system. So, uh, uh, but it cannot be equal, variance should not be exactly equal for each or for different problem setup or different condition for financial market uh, or you can say capital market case. So, error variance should not be equal uh, perfectly, but we our objective should to make a, a stable market, but uh, if there is a stable market then obviously people cannot uh, uh, have the risks or people cannot go for investment etc. So, they are in need of something, but it should not be extremely high, it should be very optimum one. Okay. So, this is how the structure of you know skewness of the distribution. So, that means, it is a skewness issue. Okay. So, similarly, uh, a, a, there is another co concept called as a data transformation. So, in fact, uh, heterogeneous, uh, when there is heterogeneity, then obviously or heterosclerosity, uh, then obviously one of the standard trick is to go for transformation. If you go for transformation, then obviously uh, it may turn to homoscedacity uh, homo problem. But the thing is, is the transformation should be very accurate, very perfect, very feasible one. If the transformation rule is or the transformation technique is not unbiased, uh, if it is totally biased, then obviously it will add heterosclerosity problem rather than it will reduce the heterosclerosity problem. Okay, so uh, uh, the transformation technique should be perfectly okay for this particular problem. Okay, so uh, that means uh, in tenth there is a transformation technique. Transformation technique. Okay. Similarly, another another point is the uh, uh, very beginning itself, wrong functional form. So that is also another factors which add the autocorrelation problem also. But you know transformation te means uh, you, you if you if you go for wrong functional form, say linear mod, uh, model to non-linear or non-linear model to model, and if you go for solving the particular scheme, then obviously it will add heterosclerosity problem. So you must be very careful uh, about that one. So that means uh, uh, this is called as a uh, uh, wrong functional form, wrong functional form of the model. So like this, there are. Um, and there are several uh, you can say uh, several ways you you have to uh, find out heterosclerosity can be coming into the picture so the cause is not a single one so there are multiple causes uh, these are the uh, means these, uh, whatever factors we have discussed these are the relevant uh, causes through which heterosclerosity is always be there in the uh, uh, economic problem always means it is most of the cases not you know uh, every case it cannot be but most of the cases you will find heteroscedacity is a issue. Okay. So, now uh, you get to know what is uh, what is heteroscedacity problem, uh, what are its nature and what are causes, then finally uh, we like to know what is the consequences. Okay. So, then uh, then we like to know consequences. Obviously, so far the consequences is concerned, we, we like to highlight the you know uh, the uh, blue property okay so consequence so far the cons consequence is a, 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 uh, is a factor then we have to see the blue factors okay best linear unbiased estimators okay okay best linear unbiased estimators so that means it should be linear it should be unbiased minimum variance then consistent and finally not least it's a efficient okay uh, very uh, parameter should be very efficient okay so now so far as heteroscedacity is there it uh, it does not affect the unbiased unbiasedness property okay it will go with the unbiased property but it is not efficient okay so it it will affect uh, it is not affect this one so it will affect this one this will affect this one this will affect this one so that means when heterosclerosity is uh, present in the model then you know estimated parameters will not follow the minimum variance will not follow consistent property it will not follow the follow the efficient property so that means because the variance is very very high and it is totally unequal so, uh, if the variance is low and a, 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 you know equal uh, for every sample points uh, or for different sample points, then obviously, 
so this will lead to you can say blue property so our aim is to transfer this particular inefficient or you can say inconsistent or larger variance to minimum variance or consistent or you can say efficient that is the consequence part of the model so if it is not uh, it is not going to maintain the minimum pro variance property consistent property and efficient property so as a result uh, this model cannot be considered as the best and it can, it cannot be used or it it, it should not be used uh, for you know for forecasting and policy you need to have a solution for that that means again you have to redesign reformulate restructure till you get the model where all the estimated parameters having minimum variance unbiased st consistent and efficient okay this is how the consequence part of this heteroscedasticity problem okay next is the detection criteria okay so like you know uh, multi collinearity and autocorrelation heteroscedasticity uh, can be detected by various uh, you know methods so there are large number of methods available to detect the heteroscedasticity problem uh, accordingly you have to find out its also solution for that okay so what is that particular solutions you see here uh, 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 means forget about first solution let's first we detect then we'll go for a solution so detection criteria there are several methods i will just highlight a few methods here uh, uh, because of time constant and uh, um, uh, mostly these two two three techniques are uh, usually applied uh, to detect the uh, you can say heteroscedasticity problem it's very difficult to go the way we have discussed till now but we will find out some simple way how to detect the heteroscedasticity problem so that simple way we have to structure here yes. so one method is called as pure man rank correlation method rank correlation method okay so that uh, uh, that formula is r e upon x equal to 1 minus 6 summation d square divided by n into n square minus 1 okay so okay what is e and what is r e x that means e is another one variable x is another variable you know we start with y x then y head and e but in the sphere sphere main rank correlation to detect the heteroscedasticity we like to integrate x and y okay so we like to know what is the correlation associated with between x and e if there is such correlation so in fact it looks like you know heteros uh, multi collinearity type situation so if it is uh, if that particular uh, uh, correlation is statistically significant then it will be have the uh, you know heteroscedasticity issue so that has to be removed so 1 minus 6 summation d square into divided by n into n square minus 1 so d is the difference between e and x okay so we have series of points like e1 e2 e3 like this then x1 x2 x3 like this so we have to find out the difference the difference is called as d1 d2 d3 like this okay so this is how you have to make summation uh, find out again d1 square d2 square d3 squares then you find out summation d squares okay summation d square so the moment you will get summation d square then you put it here n equal to total number of observations okay total number of observations and this rex represents correlation coefficient between e and x so now we will get uh, uh, you know uh, uh, r value so now you have to apply t statistics so t is nothing but r square by uh, uh, 1 minus r square uh, followed by n minus 2 okay so now if it is statistically significant if it is statistically significant then you know uh, there is a presence of uh, heteroscedasticity that has to be solved okay but you know uh, rank correlation has a it is a very beautiful technique but uh, it has lots of uh, you know different structures and different sets so we have to be very careful about that one of the difference uh, one one of the interesting structure is that uh, having a, a, a same rank a, in various cases okay if there is a same ranks then this particular formula cannot be used so that is uh, then if we some some cases the ranks are not uh, ranks are same for different observations then obviously we use this formula 1 minus 6 summation d squares okay then 1 plus 12 into m1 minus m1 to the power 3 minus m1 that means m1 into m, m1 square mi, uh, minus 1 then plus 1 by 2 sorry 1 by 12 then m2 square uh, m23 minus m2 
so it will continue okay like number of equal ranks okay so divide by divide by n into m square minus 1 so, okay n into m square minus 1 so the, uh, this should be a, a, this should be a, 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 the criteria when equal ranks are there for instance let us say uh, uh, d1 d2 are equal so that means uh, uh, 2 2 is there so it is uh, uh, in one case 1 by 12 so uh, it is 2 to the power 3 minus 2 like this uh, you have to calculate the uh, rank correlation coefficient again uh, once you have a rank correlation coefficient then you have to again test through t statistic if it is significant then obviously there is heteroscedacity problem if not then uh, uh, it is a homoscedacity problem so uh, it means the moment t is significant then obviously you have to redesign restructure and reformulate it until you get the a, a homoscedacity transformation or homoscedacity problem so if it is not significant then by default the presence of heteroscedacity is not a serious problem for the a forecasting or for this use. So, you can go ahead with that particular heteroscedacity. Uh, of course, heteroscedacity cannot be totally 0, sometimes it may be available at a minor level, but uh, uh, that is not a problem. But uh, if it is at a major level, so then you have to remove for that. You must have some solution for that, otherwise, it cannot be used for forecasting or policy use, right? Um, uh, okay. Uh, you, uh, the thing is, when you will calculate R here, uh, uh, R you calculate, then uh, you know this is correlation coefficient. R is lies between minus one, plus one. Okay. So it is you know uh, it is the R square technique. So obviously, uh, uh, you know uh, that is how you need T. Uh, T can give you the better signal to significance of the. A correlation coefficient. You only cal getting the uh, uh, R is not a sufficient because it will give you the degree of association. Means obviously, like you know, multicollinearity, it will give you the linear association between these two variables x and u. So now, oh, if the degree is high, then there is a presence of high heteroscedacity. If the degree is low, it's a presence of low heteroscedacity. So accordingly, you have to restructure and redesign till you get the situation where it is the that uh, means the situation where the degree of association is at the zero level or it is close to zero. If it is at the higher level close to one, then it is a serious problem. So, you have to uh, you have to uh, restructure the model. Okay. So, uh, this is one technique through which you have to solve the particular problem. Second technique is called as a, a gold flat gold fail and quadrant test. Okay. GQ test. Okay, this is another test through which you have to detect the heteroscedacity problem. What is this test? In that case, we use F statistic. F statistic is explain some square two divided by n minus c by two. Okay, uh, minus k. Okay, minus k uh, divided by S S one n minus c by two. Okay, minus minus k okay minus k so this is ES, ess2 and ess1 so that means this is explain some squares uh, uh, at the level 2 and explain some square with level 1 so what is the level 2 level 1 so that means you see here so we have x and we have e okay so e1 e2 e3 and up to you can say en okay this is how the structure but you know when the sample size is very less so this particular method may not be very perfect fit the, uh, for a sample a small sample then you go for rank correlation you can find out the solution you know these techniques are uh, uh, there are various techniques various means all techniques are not similar structures dissimilar shape there are di di different structure and different shape and they are also very strong in any particular particular problem this particular uh, technique is very useful for large number of samples okay so what is that structure here so the moment you will get a, a, this type of error structures, let us say it has a 500 errors, okay. So for 500 observation points. So what you have to do? So uh, you what you have to do? You first uh, arrange in ascending to descending orders. Then you remove some middle points. So that middle point removal is called as a C common points, okay. So now say 500, you drop 50 in the middle. Then you uh, if you will drop 50, then it will uh, reduce to 450. Then you know. 1 to oh, first you divide the entire structure into two equal parts then accordingly you club like th like this 
Okay, so you you go, you remove this particular point, then this this you will find out ESS ESS one, and you will find out here ESS two. Okay, so this is C the omit of variables. Then accordingly you find out the F statistic. If the F statistic is you know statistically uh, statistically significant, then there is a heteroscedasticity problem. So if the F statistic is not significant, then th that will be created. You can say. Uh, that will give you an indication that it is a homoscedasticity problem. So, if it is a homoscedasticity, then there is no issue. Uh, you have to go ahead. If it is a, a F is a found uh, statistical significant, then you have to redesign, restructure till you get the a, a homoscedasticity uh, issue, means transformation of homoscedasticity. Okay. So, similarly, there is another test called as a white test through, uh, white test, uh, through which you can uh, check the detect the heteroscedasticity. Uh, in the uh, white test, so we need to integrate with the y head and e. Okay, so first you get y head and then you find out to e. So that means followed by y and x information. So you process it to get y head. Okay, so by process you will get y head. Then you have to obtain e. Then you have to build a model here so like this. Let's say the sample point. Uh, there are three variables in the system. So you take like this. Uh, you know gamma 1 gamma 0 plus gamma 1 x 1 plus gamma 2 x 2 plus gamma 3 x 3 ok plus u ok. So, uh, estimated model will be gamma 0 head plus gamma 1 head x 1 plus gamma 2 head x 2 plus gamma 3 head x 3 ok. So, you find out error term. So, y minus y head. So, obviously, you hear the moment you will get e then obviously, uh, of course, uh, the R square is high and uh, F is statistically significant, uh, uh, gamma 0 is significant, gamma 1 significant, gamma 2 significant, gamma 3 are significant. Means all these uh, all these parameters are statistically significant at the higher level and R square is very high and F is also highly uh, significant at the higher level. So, still uh, you need to have the heteroscedasticity check. So, to go for heteroscedasticity check, you have to go for again to fit another model say E equal to uh, you know alpha 0 plus alpha alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 uh, plus alpha 3 x 3 plus alpha 4 x 1 squares then plus alpha 5 x 2 squares plus alpha 6 x 3 squares plus uh, alpha 7 uh, alpha 7 x 1 x 2 plus alpha 8 x 1 x 3 Okay, then plus uh, alpha nine x x two x three plus u. Okay, u is another error term. So now you estimate this model and have the R square value. Okay, find R square. So now you multiplied n a, n with R square, then it is followed by chi square with k minus one degree of freedom. If this is statistically significant, then it is the presence of heteroscedasticity. If it is not significant, then there is no such uh, problem of heter uh, you can say heteroscedasticity. So, you have to proceed with the, uh, the means we can use that model uh, for policy use and you can say forecasting, but if it is significant then again you have to redesign restructure till you get the better fitted model. Okay. Now, uh, another way you, you will uh, get the model there is a test called as a BPG test. Okay. There is a test called as a BPG test. What is the BPG test? BPG test is you first design a model like this y equal to summation beta i x i i equal to 1 to n uh, plus beta 0 plus u i. Okay. So, now uh, you you have y head, you have e followed by y and x okay. followed by e. So, y minus y head. Okay. So, then once you have y minus y head then obviously you find out error variance sigma squares. Okay. So, now in the step 2 you would try to regress sigma square equal to uh, alpha 0 plus summation alpha i x i i equal to 1 to a, a n plus u. Okay. Then a you find out then you find out explain some squares you find out explain some squares. Okay. So, now explain some square divided by 2 followed by chi square k minus 1 chi square k minus 1 ok chi square k minus 1 and if it is significant if it is significant then there is a problem of heteroscedasticity if it is not significant then there is no such uh, heteroscedasticity problem 
so that means you can use that particular model for uh, forecasting or policy use. So, these are the detection criteria through which atherosclerosity can be observed uh, or it can give you the indication message that uh, uh, whether there is a presence of atherosclerosis in the system or uh, in that particular problem or not. If there is such problem, then obviously you have to find out its alternative or you can say re uh, restructure, redesign then till you get the model best fitted which is free from heteroscedacity. But sometimes you will face lots of difficulty. So, to solve a particular problem there is the uh, introduction of another problem. For instance, uh, if you solve heteroscedacity problem which is already cured through autocorrelation problem, uh, let us uh, start with uh, some estimated models uh, which has no autocorrelation. So, but uh, when you will go for heteroscedacity, it, uh, it, uh, uh, you can find that there is some problem of heteroscedacity. So, you have to redesign the structure. So, uh, in that case you will find that that uh, redesign the structure will uh, give you the uh, you know uh, you give you the uh, heteroscedacity free problem in solution. So, the moment you solve that uh, heteroscedacity then uh, in that particular case uh, you know redesign model may be you know a extra problem create extra problem like it can have a, again autocorrelation problem again you have to try to solve the autocorrelation if you are success then it is very ok if it is not success then you have to find out some compromise rules. So, how quick how close autocorrelation you have in the model and how close heteroscedacity you have in the model it is because presence of autocorrelation is not a serious issue it may be because it is allowed 1.5 to say 2.5, but uh, uh, presence of heteroscedacity should not be allowed, it should be removed. So, it is because the variation of data points will be very much negative factor for the econometric modeling, that in that case it cannot be considered as a best model. So, that is why you first solve the heteroscedacity problem and you will come to other problems uh, uh, so that it can be uh, solved accordingly. Okay. So, this is how the structure uh, uh, of you know uh, heteroscedacity problem. So, that means we get to know what is the various uh, uh, means the uh, definition of heteroscedacity, nature of heteroscedacity, causes of uh, heteroscedacity, then it is a detection criteria. Now, we like to know what are its solution criteria. Obviously, before going to solution, uh, the uh, obvious uh, question is. Uh, whether it is a problem for econometric modeling. In fact, most of the times we have already highlighted uh, it is obviously it is a problem. So, problem means since it is not a uh, it is you know uh, having a blue concept means uh, that uh, it is not going in favor of blue theorem. So, best linear unbiased estimator. So, obviously it is by default it is a problem and that model cannot be used for forecasting or policy use and we cannot say that this model is considered as the best model. So, that is why uh, uh, means uh, uh, it is a serious problem because it is not uh, fulfilling the properties of uh, blue theorem. So, uh, uh, so it, it, it needs solution. So, you need to find out some solution for this curing the heteroscedacity. So, what are the solution you can find out that means solutions. Okay. So, the solutions are basically divided into two parts, one with the assumption, assumption about sigma square i and you know general solutions. Why assumption about sigma square? Because it is the covariance of u upon i u i u j equal to sigma square i or uh, i uh, in, uh, i equal to j ok it uh, i equal to j what it means it is not equal variance. So, sigma square i means sigma square i may be some functional form let us say it is sigma square by x ok. So, let us say this is uh, in that particular format or you can say uh, 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 this type of case uh, sigma square x i this is the form. So, that means what you have to do. So, you 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 bring a uh, transformation load let us say you have a model y equal to alpha plus beta x i plus u. So, what you have to do since it is coming like this way. So, you better uh, otherwise you take like this sigma square x i say ok that will be better indication. So, now what you have to do? So, you divide x i both the root x i both the sides ok you divide root x both the sides ok. So, then 
and then you will get a particular solution a, 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 by the rule this is one, one variable and this is another variable. So, now you again go for estimations uh, uh, the error uh, then uh, once you go get the estimations and if you go by heterosclerosis heter check and obviously the problem can be solved. So, that means the, uh, uh, here this particular structure is called as a uh, otherwise uh, uh, you can apply this weightage least square method. So, you apply some weight which uh, which can minimize this you know unequal variance. So, we giving weightage to that particular variables will be uh, you will solve the heteroscarcity problem. Okay. Similarly, best idea is here uh, regarding say assumption about sigma square I mean you see oh, what is the form of sigma square. It may be sigma square i equal to say alpha plus beta x i another format. So, you divide alpha plus beta x i with y and x then you again re estimate the uh, re, I means transport uh, variable obviously you will, you will get a situation where there may, be no, may not be any heteroscarcity problem. So, that means there is a need of uh, proper transformation with respect to uh, sigma square i. Okay. So, you first know what is the sigma square i then with respect to sigma square i you will go for this weightage factor or transformation rule. So, this is one uh, one uh, uh, one way to solve this particular heteroscarcity problem. The second uh, aspect of heteroscarcity problem is uh, means we categorically divided uh, uh, in the other part is called as a general solution. So, general solutions means you can go for transformation rule also uh, general transformation rule. For instance, uh, you know uh, uh, obviously you can start with very in uh, inspection method if you find there is some kind of variability means a huge variability there may be some presence of outliers etcetera. So, it is better you start with the transformations. So, if you start with the transformation then obviously, at the end you may not have a heteroscarcity problem, but if you by inspection if you are getting you know some kind of variation and you are not transforming and going with you know original setup then obviously, you will again go back to the original position because the uh, estimated model end of the uh, estimated models you may not uh, uh, get the heteroscarcity solution. So, it is better if you by inspection if you will get first before you handling this particular problem by inspection you observe whether there is a, a, a heterosclerosis such type of heterosclerosity problem may be there or not then you go for transformation. But you know any problem can be start with a transformation, but uh, uh, you can do that, but that is not good choice always because if you will uh, if you will apply uh, the transformation rule a uh, very beginning then you know you you are going to lose the originality of that particular variable. So, that is why it is better uh, you should not start with the uh, transformation if it is not necessary or not required then you find if it is necessary then you have to go by transformation. It is actually uh, just like a circle you have to move one after another structure till you get the best fitted model. In one stroke it is very difficult to find a solution which can be considered as the best for you know uh, uh, um, best fit models which can be considered as a policy user or forecasting. So, it is very difficult to get in the first end. So, uh, uh, you have to go uh, uh, step by step till you get the best fitted model. So, okay, this is how the once another solution to the general transformation either it is called as a general transformation rule, this is called as a general transformation rule or transformation uh, with respect to uh, as per the structure of sigma square i. So, because sigma square if, if it is not uh, uh, equal then obviously, sigma square i uh, having some functional form. So, that functional form has to be observed very carefully then you have to apply or multiply or subtract divide whatever you like till you get the uh, models which is free from heteroscedacity. Okay, this is another solution for this particular problem. Second solution is uh, in fact, uh, in this transformation rules there is a lots of transformation criteria. Uh, you can go for log transformation, you can go for exponential transformation, you can go for some methodological transformation, you can go for uh, you know some uh, different tra uh, transformations. So, uh, every transformation rule uh, structure is completely different and uh, like you know different techniques will give you different types of results and sometimes uh, some, some technique will give very positive for your uh, objective and some uh, some transformation will give you for negative for the particular objective. Similarly, in that case also uh, in the uh, transformation rule uh, uh, like technique transformation rule also give you some something positive for you, something for negative for you. So, that is why what, what is my suggestion is that uh, 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 you go transferring the variable one after another structure, 
if in one transformation rule uh, you will get it then obviously it's good for you you are lucky enough but if not then you have to sequentially go with a different transformation till you get the best model which is free from heterosclerosity and other problems okay so transformation rule cannot be unique uh, it's uh, it is in fact by definition it is very multidimensional in nature so there are many ways you can transfer the vari uh, variables in different form or different structure and that can be, that is essential and that that is needed that is also required to do to get the best fitted model because uh, if you know model itself uh, means econometric modeling is a decision making science if you at least uh, define in proper way in a broad angle so that means there are various alternatives must be with you so within the various alternatives you have to find out the best possible solution which can be uh, considered uh, as the policy use or which can be considered for forecasting issue so that is how you must be very careful about the transformation rule so uh, we, uh, we have a separate uh, 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 lectures for you know digit test during the digit test i will discuss detail about the transformation rule if was if possible we will uh, uh, highlight all these issue details there okay this is another uh, means it's about the transformation uh, rule then sometimes you know uh, re redesign the variables okay variables may be re for instance you are using the term exports with the, the impact of exports on in inflations okay so uh, 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 so you are starting with the direct amount of exports with the inflations and uh, by that way you will get you know uh, heterosclerosity problem so in the next step what you will do you transfer the export into a percentage of uh, uh, amount of export as a percentage of ddv this is another way to transformation rule so if you uh, uh, instead of using uh, direct exports if you will use export as a percentage of gdp then obviously that transformation may uh, solve the heterosclerosity problem so you must be very careful because the way you will transfer this like this uh, is require lots of theoretical knowledge export as a percentage of gdp is a meaningful interpretation so that's why it can be used but uh, if there is no such meaningful interpretation you cannot use for the, you you cannot transfer that variable uh, arbitrarily so there should be logic behind it there should be proper theory behind this then you will go for that type of transformation okay so then similarly there is another trick called uh, redesigning the mathematical form of the model since mathematical formulation of model imperfection of the model will give heterosclerosity problem so you continuously redesign the model because in the first hand you cannot observe whether this particular functional form is having more, uh, heterosclerosity free from heterosclerosity or not uh, so ultimately once you have then again you have to redesign the mathematical formulation of the model then again you test for heterosclerosity it may be a, a solution for the heterosclerosity problem okay so this is another way to solve the heterosclerosity problem so then another uh, another way you can solve the heterosclerosity problem is improving the data co data collection technique okay so because i have mentioned uh, there may be a respondent some are very positive to your questionnaire some are very negative to your questionnaire so this side it is unbiased and this side is biased and if you club together then obviously there will be heterosclerosity problem so you know uh, uh, so it you should be very good respondents and that should be the respondents must be homogeneous in nature they can understand your problem in equal level or equal angles obviously the sample point, points cannot be very or cannot far from the other sample points so as a result uh, heterosclerosity problem can be solved so that means uh, what is that suggestion is that improving data techniques will also solve the problem of heter heterosclerosity so by by um, like this there are several other uh, uh, rules also through which heterosclerosity problem can be solved so uh, uh, so we have discussed on the uh, what is the exact problem of heterosclerosity in nature then its consequences causes and detection criteria and the solution criteria and uh, obviously we have uh, in between we have also discussed whether it is a problem obviously it is a problem you need to have a solutions and for that solution you must have a uh, uh, your approach must be positive you must have a huge knowledge on technique wise transformation uh, uh, transformation information etc etc so that uh, it can be give you lots of positive things how to solve this heterosclerosity problem with this we will close this chapter thank you very much have a nice day